Save Our Seas funding has contributed enormously to the conservation of sharks and rays, often in countries where there's virtually no background information and there is such a huge need for the sound scientific grounding that research can give to this conservation work. At the Save Our Seas Foundation, we support all different kinds of marine conservation projects. We fund scientists, educators, try and get and find the data that tells us what we need to do, and then to communicate it to people in a way that helps us understand you know, what we all need to do to be part of the solution. What we often look for are the young people who want to do something totally new. In some respects, it's, it's a risky approach because not all projects will work well. But so often, this is the key, it's the stepping stone for young researchers to, to do something really big and to become established in their field. And that is rarely available in our community. I think the Save Our Seas Foundation is one of the most important funders of shark and ray conservation in the world. I mean, no question. If you have a look at the number of projects we fund, the diversity of projects we fund, it's everything from the RS Research Station to the Shark Center for Education. We fund direct conservation action. We fund, in principle, research that can support conservation. We fund education and awareness raising. Like, the breadth and scope of the stuff the Foundation funds is it's massive. I think the other thing the Foundation does is there is a real genuine commitment to building capacity and supporting students and young conservation practitioners. The first project they funded of, of mine was uh, um, a small grant looking for porcupine rays in the Southern Great Barrier Reef. What was really nice, and actually this is still true to the day, is I think the Foundation has courage in supporting stuff that is truly exploratory. There was no guarantees that we were going to find these animals at all, but the grant still got through. I was like, this is great. Like, well, I've told them that we may not have success here and they still funded us. You know, that's what exploration science is. That was really cool. Saber Seas um, assisted with personally my project and many other projects in our region which looks at sawfishes and guitar fishes. When I started my project, I was a graduate student, just finished my graduation without any experience of working with um, such an important issue. The Save Our Seas Foundation was the first organization which actually believed in the process. For someone to support you for something that you're doing probably not necessarily novel, but something a little different, something that hasn't been done before, and there is a chance of failure as well. You'd never know that it's gonna be successful, your project. And, and I can understand why that is so important for a young scientist. So finding opportunities with organizations like Save Our Seas Foundation is extremely important for conservation of species as well. So it's not only research, it's not only monitoring, but it also education and conservation and action. Save Our Seas Foundation actually helped my team to achieve a change in the behavior and the mindsets of the people that we are working with and given us the opportunity to be able to do that for, for the bigger picture in a little bit of change of marine conservation scenario in our part of the world. The Save Our Seas Foundation has allowed me the privilege of studying a group of animals that are really marvels of evolution. In my own career, that I would not have been able to do that without the support and the friendship of the Save Our Seas Foundation. So the key thing we look for in our projects is sort of you know, real world conservation value. What difference are these projects gonna make for the, you know, for the species and places that need it most? Nobody knew how many sharks of which species were being killed to supply the global fin trade. And we were pioneers in using genetics to be able to identify the shark species in the fin trade just from their body parts, just from their fins, and also uh, quantify the number of sharks being killed by individual species to supply the fin trade. And that changed government policy on an international scale to help uh, shark conservation. My project that Save Our Seas uh, helped is the Angola Erasmus project that aims to access the impact of fisheries. 
on sharks and rays in Angola. Save Our Seas believed in the idea, and this is very important when you are uh, doing something that is kind of pioneer. So there's really a lot to do there uh, in every angle from the research side, from the educational side. The goal is to inform policy because there is nothing done till now. There is no MPAs, there's really nothing done in Angola. Save Our Seas Foundation, for me, the funding support means a lot because when I started Sharks and Rays Australia, we had nothing and we got that Keystone grant and there was a lot of hurdles like getting a boat into registration took nine months. Well, that was nine months of the first year of our grant. You know, Save Our Seas Foundation stuck with it and they were like, that's fine, you can take the time, you know, yeah, whatever it needs to get it started. So yeah, that was, that was absolutely vital. I'm getting emotional. It was vital. <laughs> It, it, it really was because, yeah, you can't film that. <laughs> no, I was trying to do things and I wasn't sure I had to do it. And to have somebody who goes, it's fine, you can do it. That's major. So Save Our Seas Foundation is doing a lot for the conservation of the marine world to understand how the planet functions, how the ocean environment function, how the species function, so that we know how our daily activities affects them. So the more we know about the species, the better we can protect them. Gain the Shark Action Plan in the Canary Islands has been used as a basis and as an inspiration to develop the Mediterranean conservation strategy, as well as uh, all the other different action plans that have been developed and sub-regional action plans after that. So it's had a huge, huge impact on, on the conservation of the species. One thing that I found that I appreciated a lot from the foundation is that I always felt part of that family. That has a, has a huge value as an early career scientist especially, for me to gain confidence, gain a name, set up a team. I think it's really important that in the broader sense of stuff that it, the information that these countries are able to glean, it helps them develop better identification guides, better management policy and better conservation policies, which all that goes into their national plans of action, which are extremely important. And ultimately it'll help with the conservation of, of the sharks and the rays in these various countries. I think it was a, a really great connection that we had with Save Our Seas in terms of willing to support something that had already started. This continuation of our research on Holbush Island through the Save Our Seas grant allow us to expand to obtain scientific products, but more importantly, it allows us to expand all these educational activities that we've been willing to work for and we didn't have the funds to do. Especially in countries like mine, where historically men have been doing the type of work, for example, I do, right? And so being a woman in my country and having this opportunity where I'm being a leader and I'm leading people and I'm also training people and fostering the love for sharks in my country as a woman in science is very important. It, it, that is um, an asset from the foundation. Save Our Seas Foundation to me is this global movement protecting amazing, important species in our oceans for the future generations. The whole package, the funding, the contact with scientists, the contact with educators, the contact with government agencies, all of that is needed to take the science and make it applicable, directly applicable, to conservation and management. And that comes around because Save Our Seas Foundation provides those opportunities. Save Our Seas are literally enabling uh, the conservation of critical areas in the world with species that are right now disappearing. Overfishing is happening, so for me it's hope for the oceans. Uh, that's what Save Our Seas means to me. If we're going to conserve these things and protect these things, it's going to come down to really passionate, dedicated people to do that. And I think the foundation is allowing those people to be nurtured. I think it's hugely important for, for organizations like, like Save Our Seas Foundations and others to, to have those little trust on people who are younger without any experience and help them to achieve, which at the beginning might feel like is maybe not going to happen, but it just might. Since the Save Our Seas Foundation was founded you know, more than 20 years ago, there's been tremendous strides in progress for shark conservation all around the world. There's been you know, huge victories in 
international legislation protecting their trade. There's been massive growth in, in protected areas being created sort of just for sharks. There's an ever-growing community of, of, of advocates and, and passionate people that are dedicated to really trying to make sure that there is this difference being made for sharks and rays and I'm sort of hugely optimistic for the next 20 years and beyond where I really believe that this sort of growing global community can sort of bend the curve as it were as one of decline for these populations back into recovery. Thank you.